Uh, what is number one? The oh, number okay. one mistake that songwriters make. Not knowing what you're writing about. Huh? That's the number one mistake. And people think they know what they're writing about. But well, because they do. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they know the story. Oh, I see. Actually, what, what's interesting is they may think they know what they're writing about, but the truth <laughs> is they don't. Um, what happens is you get, you know, well, this has happened to all of us, okay? you get this wonderful line of inspiration, or two or three or four lines, yeah? Because that's the way most of us start our songs. We, we get an idea, and we go, oh, I love those lines, I'm going to put those down. Maybe that's my verse, I'm into my song, here I go, and off you're, you're off, off and running. And at that point, if you don't stop and think about what do those lines mean, and usually we don't. We get these four lines that we love, and then we're going to write a, a verse, a, a, a chorus to go with them. So then you write a chorus that kind of relates to those lines that are in that verse. And you go, okay, there's a chorus. I got a chorus. And now I've got to write verse two. And then you really have to, at that point, you have to know what you're writing about because you cannot write verse two unless you know how to develop what you said in the first verse. So if you don't stop at the point that your inspiration gives you those opening lines and say, what are these about? What am I really talking about? What's my theme? What's my central core idea? What is it I'm trying to say? If you don't do that, if you just keep going on inspiration, Chances are the, the song that you write will not have any cohesiveness and listeners will drop out at a certain point because they can't follow you either. Um, you know, maybe they'll hear something in it. Maybe they can kind of put it together uh, if they see some pattern there. But you're asking your listeners to work. And that's not our job. <laughs> you know, listeners are there to feel. They're there to enjoy and feel and go for the be taken for a ride somewhere that's by us. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, they're not there it's to work. It's entertainment. You turn on the yeah. TV because you expect that you can kind of be mindless and entertained. It will take you on. I think people uh, need that. And and I think that as songwriters, you know, you bring up a good point, uh, which is people need that. As songwriters, we sometimes tend to insist that listeners give us their energy. And that's not really our business. We can do that. We can ask them to work hard at it. You'll have fewer listeners because most listeners really come for the ride, for the emotional ride, to feel something, to, to experience someone else's life, to experience what happened to you, and, and or feel it themselves right. and say, Does this it happened to me. Resonate. Yeah. yeah, and make it resonate. And then it's, um, uh, then it becomes not just entertainment, but also insight. But we have to give it to them so that they, because if we ask them to work too hard, they'll drop out. They, they have lives. They have, you know, kids. They have a tough time out there. Um, our job is not to make it tougher. Do you know, I just flashed on something, and I've never asked you this in all the years I've known you. You can now make it a little warmer because it's frigid. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like 40 degrees inside. Okay, so many years ago when I first started Taxi, and I, I was writing all the listings and sending them out, we published a whopping 30 listings a month. Month, and I got an email from a woman that said, I do not understand what this listing means. And I said, well, then maybe you should read it a second time and, and it will sink in. And she basically wagged her finger at me. And now knowing you, it was probably <laughs> it said it because of the quality of what she taught me was a life lesson. She said, young man, communication is not the responsibility of the listener. Ooh. It's the responsibility of the person communicating. And if I don't understand what your listing says, that's your fault, not mine. Let's thank her. Yeah. That's, a, she, that's a beautiful way to say it. Yeah. She changed my life. The woman literally changed my life by telling me that because it, it improved my communication to Taxi's members. It improved the quality of the listings. And that is something that you would absolutely say. And you're basically saying it here. You just yes. said it. Yes. Um, yeah. It's it, on us to do it and yeah. to give them the experience. It's not on them to go ha make themselves have the experience. Yeah. We're the ones who are saying, listen to our song. Let me give you an experience. And that's on us. So if we make it too hard for them um, and they drop out, we can't blame them. And a lot of times as a head screener here, I would get complaints. Not a lot, but because taxi members are such wonderful people. But... Um, they, I would get complaints saying, no, they are. Really, they are. Uh, <laughs> she had to underline that a couple of, no, they no, are. No, no, they we, are. We, we, we now I'm get amazed very, by taxi members. Yeah. We get very few 
unusual people anymore. Our, our membership has gotten really cohesive and wonderful. Over yeah, and, and well-educated yeah. around songwriting, too. Um, so every once in a while, I would get somebody who would say, um, I don't want to dumb down my songs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it easy for listeners. Well, that's fine. You, you can do that. I mean, you can write stuff that's really challenging. Don't complain when you don't have a lot of listeners. <laughs> um, really well-educated listeners will gravitate to you. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I mean, you'll find you could find your your fan base. Uh, you could find it, but it it won't be huge. I mean, it's going to be probably limited to people who really enjoy that kind of challenge, and that may be the kind of fan that you want. So just be aware that when you start yeah. writing your song. If you're not, if you don't know what you're writing, your listener probably isn't going to know, and they aren't going to make an effort to find out. So one of the good things, so, so something you can do, a good exercise to do, is to find a theme, and then uh, let's say your theme is "I love you, but you don't love me." Okay, that's a theme that's very common in songs, and we all treat it in different ways. And it's a really good theme because listeners can relate to it. But let's say that's your pick that theme. I, you know, I love you, but you don't love me, and then practice answering the questions that that theme suggests, answering them in your own way, which is, um, what does that mean? How do I feel about that? What's the situation? What's happening? How did I get here? What do I expect to do next? How am I going to get out of this? What do I hope will happen? That's a whole list of questions. You can interview yourself Ooh. and get yourself to the next level. That way you know what you're writing about. If you don't ask yourself what you're writing about, not only will you not know, but you're also you're not likely to have the insights that you would get if you really looked at it. Do you realize when things like you can interview yourself come out of your mouth, do you know that you've just dropped like a golden bomb? <laughs> well, I, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big I mean, one. That's huge. <laughs> interviewing yourself or interviewing your co-writer. That's another way. That's yeah. how I learned to do it was I was interviewing my co-writers to get more out of them. And as I did it, next time I was writing alone, I thought, well, I can just ask myself those questions. <laughs> so you'll find that. I mean, that's in my books and stuff. And it, when it says, ask the questions that the theme wants to have answered. And the only person who's there when you're writing a song by yourself is you. So you interview yourself you ask yourself those questions and go through them and once you start doing that believe me if you're stuck on your second verse once you start answering those questions you're going to know what to put in your second verse and it's going to relate to your first verse it's going to make sense it's going to go deeper into what your first verse and your chorus started to say are you a fan of the um flipping the verses um our mutual oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, Ralph Murphy has suggested that. Other songwriting experts that I know have suggested that as well, that a lot of times your second verse turns out to be what your first verse should be. And sometimes people overthink it when really all they need to do is flip them. Yeah. Is that an effective technique in your um, estimation? Well, there's a reason for that. And um, it actually happens to be mistake number... Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. so we can get to it. Mista get mistake to number five. Yeah. So we'll get there. And why flipping verses, flipping your, making your second verse, your first verse, why that so often works, there's a real reason for that. So um, we'll get there. But anyway, that's, that's where I would start is keep a, an eye on your inspired lines. And when they come to you, look look at what they are ask yourself what's what am i talking about what's my theme where am i going with this what are the questions i need to answer early on like when you get those inspired lines don't be afraid to go look at them inspired lines are not like fragile little birds that come and sit on your shoulder and you know <laughs> fly away when you look at them too much um really the inspiration is a is a is a muscle just like your creative your creativity is a muscle. The more you work it, the more it works for you. Absolutely. But inspiration can also be um, it's kind of opaque sometimes, or it can be, it's like a dream. You know, you can't always understand it right away. So you need to look at it a little bit closely.